After more than a dozen years, a change in how hypertension is defined. For years, every time you would head to the doctor's office, getting 140 over 90 was still pretty good. That's right. Now the American Heart Association is actually changing that. And this is a big deal because that means millions of Americans now technically have blood pressure issues. So Joel Nichols, who has the lowest blood pressure in our staff, joined <laughs> yeah. us here in the studio with a heart doctor from the AHA. Joel, what does all of these numbers and the changes mean for the everyday person worried about their blood pressure? Well, Dr. Gupta and I were just talking about that. And really what this tells us is we should be doing a better job, all of us, on the front end of health care to stay healthy and keep it low so that we save money and lives on the other end of healthcare. Correct, correct. And I think that's that that's the real change in emphasis now is that is that we know that there's a continuum of risk that actually starts much earlier. We used to think that if you were under 140 over 90, you were good. But now we know that starting at 130 over 80, that risk of a heart attack and stroke doubles. So it's really important that all of us are more aware of this and start to take action earlier. And staying aware involves what you've got there in your hands. Yep. And we can have yep. one of these at our home. Correct, yeah. And this is an, and this is a standard blood pressure cup that you can get at any pharmacy, um, Costco, Sam's Club, anywhere. Um, they cost about anywhere between 30 to $90. They last forever. And you can take your blood pressure every day if you want. And it's a great way to, to improve your own health. And they are easy. They're user friendly, as they say nowadays. Absolutely. It yep. really does it. Absolutely. Yeah. No, they're very simple. Um, so, so there's a method to taking blood pressure. You want to make sure that, you, that you're at rest. You've been at rest for at least five minutes, typically at a seated position. A lot of times I tell my patients to put their blood pressure cuff on their kitchen table. That way they can just put their arms rest there. And at the end of the breakfast, they can just put, t put their arm out and take their blood pressure right there. And that's a great time to take it. So how much of this is genetic? Like my grandma and my mom both had high blood pressure, therefore my brothers and I all have to keep a close eye on that. Uh, how much of it is genetic? How much can we change by exercise and, and eating right and that kind of thing? That's great. So you can think about it uh, as, as about 50-50, so that, so that about half your risk is genetic, and it's just, it's just how you are, it's just how you're wired, and, and, and it does run in families. And then, and then half of that risk is modifiable, and so then things that, so lifestyle things that you do, the amount of exercise, diet, weight, sleep, um, caffeine, alcohol, all those things uh, affect it. So it, it is something that we should know the number going forward, starting right. now, starting today, yep. and yep. then try to, to manage that some way. And I know that there are uh, blood pressure medications out there. For the most part nowadays, they don't, there used to be a, a fear that it would affect other parts of my life. It would affect mm -hmm. my mood. It mm -hmm. would affect other, they're much better now. Correct. And I think, I think most patients, um, you know, when they start a medicine, there always is an adjustment period. But right. after a few weeks, they usually do adjust. And usually, um, I would try to work with my patients. And, and, um, and if they're having trouble with medicine, there are many other classes of medicine we can switch them to. You can usually find them an option that they can tolerate and gets them the result they need. Make sure you're getting your blood pressure taken and tested. You can do it at home, as the doctor demonstrated. Uh, it really is important. Like in my case, I found out a few years ago, I had really kind of sky high blood pressure. So I had to go on some medication. And I mean, it, it, you know, it really makes a difference going forward. And now that I violated my own HIPAA standards, I will be suing myself. Uh, but you really need to get, you know, keep an eye on this and get yourself tested and, and kind of watch out what you're eating, how much you're exercising, what your family history is, uh, and keep those new numbers in mind. 130 over 80. 80. Is one number better or worse to watch for, the systolic or they're, diastolic? They're both important, and, and some people will have a tendency to have a higher diastolic, and some people have a tendency to have a higher, higher systolic. It has to do some of it with just age and just some of just how you are. Keep track of it. It's a lot of good advice with these brand new numbers. Back to you.